until you do, begin to relocate, actually move your business. Hello? The first day of May, to turn out. Hello. That is the reason yeah. why I am saying this. And the reason is going to come from both sides. So that you won't say that this thing take you on our way. Start to move your business. Now, I want you better understand the danger of the danger that we'll find ourselves and we are trying to cost this year. It is going to happen. Happen, I will not tell you. I know the hour will come. Now, of you who don't understand what is going on. And we are going to do just one analysis. And then we will have for you this evening is that are you aware yesterday during the program, are you aware that there is tough ahead after the aware of the tough time? Maybe you are not aware of the tough time. As a Biafran, as Igbo speaking Biafran person, that all you do is to do buying and selling. Tough days are ahead. The days ahead are evil. If you are watching us on Twitter, we urge you to join us immediately on Enter Biafra because you are going to be cut off. Those of you watching us on Twitter, we have quite a huge number of people watching at this moment on Twitter alone. So if you know you are watching from Twitter, please leave and join us on Enter Biafra. It is very important you join on Enter Biafra so that you will not be taken on away the day you are going to come online and then nobody is streaming these brokers because of the way they censor our program and then you begin to look for how to, to use Enter Biafra. So you have to start using it now. That you still have options where to watch and how to watch it. So we are going to cut you off from Twitter and we urge you to join us on Instagram. Thank you very much. All right. Now, if you are a businessman, a woman, and you are from Biafra, are you aware that the days ahead is going to be tough after 29th of May. Now let me show you something. There is a report that says tough time ahead for Nigerians as federal government prepares to implement 5% exercise duty on telco services. They are in but they are not increasing the services. They are not increasing security. I want everybody to understand. And I, I just have one or two issues to make analysis today. And then we go for, we go straight away to our question and answer. The federal government of Nigeria is set to implement 5% exercise duty tax on mobile telephones. Mobile telephone, fixed telephones, and the internet services is previously removed earlier in the year. Additional tax on telecom services is part of new fiscal policy measures
Muhammad. There are more qualified people, but of course, the full learning. Last month, Professor Isa Pantami, in all this professor and all this names, you can't hear anybody that is very qualified from the southern Nigeria. Pantami, the terrorist, the Nigerian Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, announced that the government exempted the telecom sectors from exercise duty tax in line with the, the recommendation of the Presidential Review Committee that reviewed the applicability of the duty to the telecom sector, which is considered already overburdened with taxation and the sundry levies. You all remember when he was accused of a bribe from MTN. And, uh, you know, there was a time he was accused of taking some kind of bribe from a telecom company to in order to favor them with this particular policy to exempt them from the Nigeria government policy. I hope some of you may still remember. If you not, you have to go and check it. There was some kind of allegation some time ago, either against Pantami or against somebody else, that uh, the MTN or the telecom have paid those people about 500 billion or 500 million in order to walk them through so that uh, they will not be part of this particular tax, 5% uh, increase. Now, I do not want to go further. Let me read from here, from the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. Approval for the implementation of the 2023 fiscal policy measures and tariff amendment. This is to confirm that the Excellency, His Excellency, the President Ghost, has approved the implementation of the 2023 fiscal policy measures made up for supplementary protection measures for the implementation of the ECOWAS Common External Tariff 2022-2026 and a revised exercise duty rate on alcoholic beverages. I want you people to listen. On alcoholic beverages, cigarette and tobacco, and tobacco products, as well as introduction of exercise duty on single-use plastic, single-use plastic, which means even that's where the as part of Nigeria's commitment to climate change, adaptation and mitigation to environmental degradation, a green tax made up of exercise duty on single-use plastic and import adjustment tax levy is introduced on motor vehicles of 2,000 cc and above. You can imagine Nigeria is talking about energy or climate or whatever when there is nothing, there is no development, there is no innovation, there is nothing. They just want to copy in order to impoverish you, in order to, you know, strangle you economically. Because they are, they are people are not business oriented. Fulanese are not business oriented. Northerners are not business oriented as such. So, the target is you. They depend on government and stipend and grant they receive from government. They depend on ground. They are very, very unproductive till today. It is the history of Nigeria. Now, what I want to show you today is that, you know, I mentioned it yesterday. Look at this. They say there is exercise duty rate increase on alcoholic beverages. In Nigeria, they are now increasing tax on alcoholic beverages. The same Nigeria that are now increasing increasing tax on alcoholic beverages. This is Nigeria. I want you people to ask yourself this particular alcoholic beverages that they are increasing the tax, probably possibly not for northern Nigeria, why they are increasing the tax in Nigeria in paper, they are destroying the supposedly beverages that should be bringing money to the ports of Nigeria, they are destroying it in the north. They have what they call Hizba police in the north. It's a Sharia police. Islamic state police called Hizba is busy in the north 
gathering the alcohol that you are paying tax in the south. And let me tell you, the worst part, the worst part of this whole thing is that while you have paid tax in south, in the southern Nigeria, for the alcoholic beverages, and you happen to own a business in the northern Nigeria, where you are owning your business, hotel business, for example, restaurant business, for example, and you happen to transport your alcohol beverages, your alcoholic beverages from the south to the north, because you have to transport them from the south to the north. They don't have it in the north. Now, having paid your tax, okay, having paid your tax from Nigeria, southern Nigeria, as a southerner and as a Christian, you will move your alcoholic beverages to the northern Nigeria only for this Hezbollah and the Hezbollah police. Because when Hezbollah police is kind of Hezbollah. So when this you, you take it to the north, only for the Hezbollah police to destroy those beverages after you have paid the duty, after you have paid the tax, after you have paid everything to the government of Nigeria, and in other words, they will still come back to the National Assembly to collect the tax you pay, and they still destroy your business. You see, I do not know how, you know, somebody can explain this, for some of you to understand it, that it is not working, is that it is not working. And it is not working, is that it is never going to work. Now, this year, they are increasing the tax on alcoholic beverages, but they have not imposed a law that is going to override the Hezbollah police in the north. They have not come to amend a law to say, this law is final in the north, that nobody will destroy the alcoholic beverages of business people that are from the southern Nigeria, where we are talking about Biafra people. That are, that are, you know, owning big businesses like hotel businesses in the north. There is no law protecting their alcoholic beverages in the north. But these are the people that are telling you, bring some more and let us kill him. He's, he won't be after. But I'm speaking for them now because they don't know what they are doing. These are idiots. And we cannot use because of their stupidity and allow millions of their to perish in Nigeria. Because of few individuals who have access to internet and access to news media. They use them to blackmail what we're doing. Just like those ones that are putting bounty on me every day. When Samonepa talk, they come and counter it. Each time Samonepa is talking, they will come and counter it. But when this thing, impunity is happening, you will never see them talk. But each time Mundibu is being attacked and killed, Samonepa rise to speak. They will be the first people, not Fulani, not Aosa, not even the government. They are going to be the first people to rise up against Samonekpa. Say, bring Samonekpa, let us kill him. $100,000, $50,000. They are placing bounty, you know, because that's how they have the money. Every day they wake up, they are thinking, have Samonekpa said anything? But they are not thinking, I want you people to go and ask all of them questions. What is going on? You said you want Nigeria. All you do is to come and speak for Nigeria. I am asking you now, how are you going to balance this equation where the federal government has come to increase tax on alcohol? When they are increasing tax on alcohol, are they increasing this tax that Mohammed in the north is doing alcoholic business? I want you to listen to me very carefully. You see that here, the Hezbo police, and this is just small, this is 2.5 million bottles of alcohol in Kano, destroyed. Now, federal government is remembering that alcoholic beverages is a very important business. So, you can imagine all the businesses in this life, in Nigeria, they picked alcoholic beverage. And this is, this is the actually original business of Nigeria, Unilever, the Royal Niger Company, they deal on alcohol, spirit. If you follow the amalgamation document that I read, their main business in Nigeria then, the Niger Royal Company, is 
beverages, all this uh, uh, alcohol, it was what actually gave the United Kingdom money from Nigeria, Niger area before 1900. They were dealing on alcohol. And Northern Nigeria can never forget the pain they went through because of their culture with the Britain, with the colonizers, and the alcoholic businesses. So, what am I trying to say? This increase in tax on alcoholic beverages, who is being targeted? Is it Mohammed? No. Is it Isa Pantami? No. Is it uh, Allah Hajitan Tata? No. Is it Dangote? No. The only people that are targeting are you, Okechuku, you, Afolabi, you, Chinonso, you, Nkechi, you, Chima, you, Chukuma, you, Chukude. That is the only people they are targeting today. Because they know that Musa cannot sell alcohol in the north. They know that uh, Mohammed cannot sell alcohol in the north. Because this particular alcohol you see here, somebody has paid tax for it. And yet, they destroyed it in Kano. Somebody has actually lost fortune. Yet, he paid tax to the federal government. So my question is, you that is talking about one Nigeria today, whenever you see us talk, you say one Nigeria. My question is, is there any provision in the northern Nigeria by the same government that is increasing the tax on alcohol? Is there any provision to secure those who are now doing business in the north and they are into alcoholic beverages and spirit? Is there any provision? Is there any law saying that his bar must not destroy their alcoholic beverages in the north? There is no law existing. There is no such provision. There is no such law. There is no such law. And this is just small law. This is just small. Now, let us look at the vehicle importation. Who are those importing vehicles? Who are those importing vehicles? You, okay, Chuku. You are Falabi. You Olani Olani Putu. You Aponja. All of you are the one importing vehicles. Everything happening here is to bring your economy in the south down to ground zero so that you will be powerless economically. And then they will deal with you. You will not have money to buy arms and ammunition to protect and defend your territory when they come. So the only lock you have is that you have us to start and it will save you from this impending danger. So you, you will still have some more money when the whole thing will break out and save yourself. You see, this is practical thing. As you can see in the screen, 2.5 million bottles of alcohol destroyed in the north. And today, in the same government that is encouraging his bar police to destroy alcoholic beverages in the north, is putting tax, 5% increase on, on alcoholic beverages. Does it make sense to you? I am asking you, does it make sense? Of course, it made a lot of sense to them. But it doesn't make sense to me. And the only reason why it makes sense to them is that they know why they are doing it. But you, the foolish people from the southern Nigeria, the foolish idiots, don't know why they are doing it. Why they are doing it is that they want you to put your money in alcoholic beverages, they collect it, collect tax from it, and when you eventually push it to the north, where you are going to make money, they are going to destroy it. And the worst part of this whole thing is that they drink more than the southern people. They don't want to drink alcohol, yet they are drinking it. You think when people are doing business in the north, it is only the Afrans that are drinking alcohol? No. 
They put the alcohol, they abuse it. These people you see in the north, Fulani, they abuse the alcohol, they put it in their kettle. When they are praying, they are pouring it to smoke up, smoke up and be, be getting themselves high. Yet, they don't want to enjoy it. They are against it. I have never seen, you know, this kind of dangerous diversity. Where somebody will be enjoying something and he will come public to pretend he doesn't enjoy it and he will start to destroy it. Yet, he will go secretly to buy it and it's not like nobody is, is not like, you know, a, a contraband a product, but you want to pretend to cheat your God. Say you believe in a religion that doesn't uh, condone alcohol. But yet, you go behind the door, buy the beer, pour it, pour it in the kettle, and be sipping it during your prayer. And their eye will be shining. And they thought, God is not seeing them. And when they see somebody doing the hotel, the alcohol business, they will capture, impound the trailer and destroy everything. So let us read, you know, the story of how they destroyed the 2.5 million bottles in, in Kano State. The Kano State Hizba Board has destroyed over 2.5 million bottles of alcohol confiscated in the state. The board said the action was moved. It was a move. Look at them. Look at them. Destroying something that they have just imposed new tax on. And this is going to be, you know, a continuous thing. The Caro Hizba Board has uh, destroyed over 2 million bottles of alcohol confiscated in the state. The board said the action was a move to strengthen its fight against importation, selling and consumption of alcohol, which was contraband in the state. You see... Why the, it is a contraband in the state in the north? Can you tell me one thing that anybody from the southern Nigeria has banned? Any governor? Is there anything any state governor has banned in the south and say it is contraband in the south? I don't, they don't even know what is contraband. Do you know what is contraband? When you say contraband, it means that it is entire nation. That is why it is called contraband. How can you single a state and say an item is a contraband in a state? Is Kano a country? I am telling you people what you don't know. Is Kano state a country that will declare something contraband inside Kano state? You know the point is that some of you don't even know that Kano is already a country inside them. Within themselves, they see Kano as a country. They see Kano state as a caliphate. Otherwise, let us even say they don't understand what English is, you know. But, you that is a Nigerian, well, how can you explain that Kano state have item that they, only they say is a contraband inside Kano? How do you explain that to other Nigerians? You, Nigerian people, P2B and Co, I'm asking all of you. You wake up and you say, yes, Kano State have contraband. The, the uh, alcohol is contraband in Kano State. How do you speak this English and make it to fit into Imo State as a state in Nigeria? That will single something and say, in Imo, in, uh, in uh, Kano State, this particular item is contraband in Kano State. Does it make sense to you? Yet, all of you are shouting one Nigeria. And the target is not them. They are targeting you that is doing the business. They are targeting you that is into the business. And why you are having that business in Kano is also because of them. They enjoy it, they buy it. Yet, they have made it contraband. They voted for it and they are not it into law. Against everything that is happening in other side of Nigeria, against a secular Nigeria, against the Nigeria law, against the Nigeria constitution, because without the Nigeria constitution, the government will not have impetus to impose additional tax on an items and product that another state inside Nigeria has designated as a contraband product. I do not know whether I'm making sense of. How can a federal government come to say 
This item have they have now increased the tax five percent on alcoholic beverages. While a state in the northern Nigeria is saying this item the federal government has increased the tax is contraband in their own state. And everybody is keeping quiet because all of you don't want to die. If you talk, they kill you. Yes, you continue to cause such in the country. And each time you in the south try to enact a law now say we are banning food and a cow, all of you will come under attack. All of us will saw how it happened. When when the uh, the time of the uh, upsurge of the Fulani headers uh, terrorists, they started killing people in the south. And the so many governors from Yoruba land, they wake up and say they are going to ban the the movement of cow. It becomes a problem. It becomes a national problem. Let us assume that in the Igbo, the Afra people or the southern Nigeria are the one doing this cow business. And then the North don't like it. They don't like it. Just that they don't like the business of alcohol. They are going to ban it. Now they have banned the uh, selling of alcohol in Kano State. They declare it contraband. Not only that, they are enforcing it. And you see the picture where they have destroyed. This one is just one of they have destroyed millions and millions of bottles. Yet, nobody has ever risen up from the southern Nigeria to challenge this particular illegality. That today, the president of tax on alcoholic beverages that is a contraband in the north. And the worst is that when you pay this tax, can a state that has decided this particular alcoholic beverages as a contraband will also share the benefit of the tax. They get state allocation from the tax of an item that is a contraband in Kano. I don't know whether you people understand what I'm saying. So, you see, the impunity is, is something that you can never imagine. You can never think of. It is too much. That's why we are doing what we are doing. So that by the time we finish with Nigeria this year, there will any day they hear Biafra, any day they hear Igbo, any day they hear anybody they call Simon from the Bible. Believe me, they will never forget the story of Simon in the Bible. They will never forget. You see this thing I'm doing this evening. I want everybody to just check it. And you see the mess you are into. A very big mess. In a very, very big mess. Now, we don't need to read, uh, you know, further. Another question I want to ask you people today is the issue of the ECOWAS court referendum, the Afra referendum. All Yoruba people filed for referendum at the ECOWAS court. They strike the case. They say, you know, they strike it and they don't want to entertain such case. In the same ECOWAS court today still have Biafra referendum case pending. They have even tried to hear the case and the case was adjourned till October last year. Last year, October. Till today, nobody is asking question, what is the outcome of this particular case that was adjourned till October 20th in Abuja, ECOWAS court? Is there any new date? What is the status of this particular case of referendum filed by the Northern Group and have so many ethnic nationality has become partner to this suit? Nobody is asking questions. Nobody has heard anything. And the Biafra Republic Government in Eza is going to officially communicate to the ECOWAS court. We are going to communicate with them this week. Let us know what is going on. Now, because 
the exposition I'm making here, you know, will bring us to what is going on in the ECOWAS court. So let us uh, bring the, the last correspondent from the ECOWAS court. Since 2020, 2022 or so, here, court adjourned Biafra referendum suit to October 20th. So which means there is a case. The strike Yoruba's uh, uh, suit and they are adjoining Biafra own. Now, after this 20th of October, we are yet to get any, any update, any status, any correspondence from the so-called suit. The federal, a federal high court sitting in Abuja yesterday adjoined hearing on the suit filed by the coalition of Northern Group seeking a referendum to determine the fate of Biafra and other self-determination agitation to October 20th, 2022. Where is the case today? Nobody has said anything. Justice In and Equo, who presided over the matter, granted all the motion to allow interested parties to be joined in the suit. Now, the suit. Why then have they strike Oduduwa Yoruba agitation? Why? When you see here, let me go this place. Here, they say, ECOWAS court dismisses Yoruba nation promoter suit. ECOWAS court dismisses Yoruba nation promoter suit. Uh, suit. 16th March 2023. The ECOWAS Court of Justice has dismissed a suit by four individuals seeking self determination for Yoruba nation, for Yoruba people of Nigeria. The three man panel of the court, Justice Edward Amaoko Asante, presiding Beribe uh, Kwatara and Dub Atoki, held that the applicant lacked the necessary capacity to sue for themselves and on behalf of the Yoruba nation. Okay, maybe this one has some kind of, uh, you know, maybe there's a reason for it. So they were filing that particular suit as, an, as individuals. So it does not, uh, that does not, uh, you know, they do, they do not represent uh, Yoruba. They did not file that suit as a body or as an ethnic, as a representative of the ethnic nationality of the Yoruba people. So, that is a stretch explanation. The four applicants, who are member of the coalition of the Yoruba interest group, are uh, uh, Rizquat Badmos, Ademola Falati, Yemisi, Fahansi, Ogunlala, and so, and so on, in suit marked this and that, the applicant sought and act activate their right to self-determination are provided for under Article Article 20 of the African Charter of Human Rights and People's Rights and Article 4 for this United Nations Declaration on the Right of the Indigenous People. They argue that Nigeria, they argue that Nigeria was constituted in 1914, 1914 by the British government without taking into account the social, cultural, religious and ethnic configuration of the country. They argue that the constitutional force major proclamation. <laughs> okay. These are the people of the constitutional force major. Have you seen how they failed? <laughs> hey, Jesus Christ. Have you seen how they failed? I didn't even know that uh, these are the fallen angel of the Yoruba nations now, or Yoruba nation agitation. Look at them. They are the force major proclamation. These people carrying files and the one past four eyes, they did not come to make it public. I didn't even read this thing to know, you know, because I, you know, I normally don't read things before coming online. I just uh, analyze it as I read them. I did not even know that uh, if they are the people of the first major 
Who told you who has the shouting due process? Look at them. They lack capacity. They lack marriage. They lack everything to represent the Yoruba people. Look at it. They came with the name First Major Proclamation. You see how they fail? They will not tell you this one in the public now. But they will they hide inside their, behind their screen. They will be shouting First Major. First Major. <laughs> For 23 years. <laughs> Look at them. They have striked their case out. Now we are asking, what is the status of the Biafra that is not first major? We don't have anything to do with first major. This is it. What is the case status of this? It has been, you know, said very clearly that the Yoruba people with first major, they lack merit and capacity to file such suit. Now, they say it was uh, postponed and adjourned to, you know, to October 20th. October 20th has come and gone. What is holding this case and what is the status? That's why the Biafra Republic government in exile is going to do this week. We are ready to, we are ready to scatter every table. Even people don't know what we are going to do. The Biafra government in exile is making is doing press up. We are doing press up that when we are going to start punching the Nigeria state, then we know that indeed freedom is not actually given, it is taken, and we are ready to take it. That's why we are doing press up. Some of you don't know that a lot of people have been deceived, and this is one of them. They come for the past 21 years, 23 years, and they are shouting. First major, constitutional first major. You see how they disgrace them at the ECOWAS court. Meanwhile, the Biafra court, the Biafra referendum case, without constitutional first major, is still there. You know, now so put put na ECOWAS court. What we don't know now is what is the status of that of that case, and we are going to find out this week because we are going to turn every stone that is there. So I want every one of you to understand. That what I have just said today is just small because now we are going, we need to be taking this thing, you know, uh, you know, uh, little by little, step by step, so that some of you will not get too much confused because you know, black people is that you give them things small, small. So we're going to be teaching you now. You have learned, you know, how do you, how do you balance this, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, you know, incongruous, incongruousness in this uh, Nigeria thing. Where the federal government is increasing tax on a product that is a contraband in Kano State. <laughs> I don't know how you want to. So we want to hear your opinion, you know, as a Nigerian or as whatever you are, as a Biafra. Tell us, how do you reconcile this? The federal government is increasing tax on alcohol. Alcohol is a contraband in Kano. Kano also is receiving, uh, you know, allocation, state allocation from the tax you paid to federal government from alcohol you sold in the south why the same alcohol is a contraband in Kano State and they are destroying it if they lay their hand on it so how do you reconcile it this is a dangerous diversity and they are coming to do the same thing in the south this economic jihad our line will be open for you to call us and air your opinion and tell us how do you feel you know knowing these things from this particular perspective how do you feel? How do you feel right now when you have come to know that this is what is happening? You know, and it is real. It is not like I'm making it up. Our telephone line is uh, on, and we're going to have this telephone call like 30 minutes or so, and we'll call it a day. So please make your call very fast, so we don't have a we don't have to waste time. There we go. The line is open.
You're welcome to the program. Yes, Mazi. Good evening from here. Good evening from here. Yes, Mazi, I can speak in, sir. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Mazi, this is one of the one of the things you see in the in the, in the, in the gross incompatible union called Nigeria. The union that is not approved by God and our ancestors. Mm. You see, and the, when you have you have a a, a, a book representing you as leader. You know, the servant leaders are weak. They are weak. Mm -hmm. can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, people that are, that are in fact, that are, they are the are the people that 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 are the Facilitate the 
coming of Biafra. It is going to be what is going to facilitate you, Soludo, running away from Anambra State. So please, that particular crisis you want to bring to Anambra, bring it on fast. Don't make it next year. Please, cut the salary from this last month. If you have not paid them the April salary, please, start this cutting of salary from last month so that we are going to hear that Anambra people are crying that Soludo have cut their salary because of sit at home. So that this, because these are the things that will facilitate the coming of Biafra. So certain Soludo that we want him to implement this cutting of salary immediately will be heavy. But if he don't do it, he remain a coward. You know for a while, we have been keeping it very low with Soludo because he was calling for the release of Mazen and the Khan. But he can't use that to perpetrate the evil against the Afra people. No. We are watching you, irrespective of the fact that you are calling for the release of Mazen and the Khan. Anywhere, anytime, you misstep. We will bring your leg backward. So if you think that you can ride on, on the Afra people on their back, and uh, you want to cut their salary because they are, uh, you know, engaging in civil disobedience, which is which is their right. So if they come to protest in the street, you say, you for you protesting, we are going to cut your salary. Do it this last month, April, if you have not paid them. Because I know some of you, we owe workers to uh, the next month. Maybe you are paying them December salary now, who knows. So cut it and let us hear from Anambra workers that Solu don't cut their salary for April last month. I put a chinika boboko. The line is on and open, please. Call us again and let us continue. We still have time with you this evening for a question and answer or feedback on what you have. And please call this particular session of the video and send it to, to Soludo. Let him come and fight the Afra people in Onambra State. What is called what he has come to do is to do all these funny policies. He has not built any road. He has not uh, butchered any dirty. All the dust being in Anambra is smelling everywhere. He has not done anything. Only come to put a, to put a tax and increase taxation and do, and do this and do that. You're welcome to the program. Good evening from here. Yeah, hello. Hello. Hello, can you listen to the phone, please? We do not have time. So I'll begin yes. to explain to people yes, to listen to yes, you, please. Yes, uh, the Prime Minister Simon Eber, am I speaking direct to you? Yes, you? you are speaking direct to me. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. You know, I'm calling from United Arab Emirates. Where we live here, even a hotel building, if they kill one person here, they will change the name of this place. You repaint the house and do everything to reform. But Nigeria, millions of people have died. It's not time yet for them to reason and know that Nigeria is too big to be controlled from center Abuja. So we need to disintegrate. We are watching you as a group, there are three of us here. Actually, I have a friend here who said that you are selecting people to pick their cause, that you are not going to pick my call. That's why I said, okay, it's a challenge. Let me call you. So, <laughs> no, if you pick or not, and lo and behold, immediately I die, ringing twice you pick. So how, can I, how, can I, how can I select somebody I pick calls when the, your number is not showing, your name is not showing? This is an internet call. That I don't so know who is calling. Your dick now, put on top like ACPI because you challenge me that he, he will not pick my call. You know, see? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, yeah. all of us, we are looking for one thing, you know, but you know, some people are doing a different thing that is not believing what we are doing. But, um, I want believe for a long time I'm joining the, uh, the struggle from uh, Mazen and the Kano and when the has what, uh, what happened to him, I still believe in, in five more and ever according to his program, what he's doing because he's still doing the same thing uh, only and the Kano was doing, you know, but you know in every struggle Please, uh, are you here, uh, you know, now, I don't know whether your bad mind has caught the phone because I cannot hear you again. Are you still there? Are you still there? You see, 
that person should call back because he has given the phone to a bad spirit. I don't know how somebody will just wake up and somebody is trying to call and then the person will make up his mind that Simon Ekpa is not going to pick his call, that he select the people that he pays his call. And he, you know, and he has never tried calling me because from the way the way he's sounding, you know, is these people that are, you know, like pompous to call someone. Maybe he believe in the gossip and all that that people are, are telling him. So now he made a conclusion that I pick I select people are people. I don't even know who is calling. I don't even see their name. You know, you know, you don't. You are not calling the number, okay? You are not calling my WhatsApp. You are not calling my number. You are calling internet. I don't know who is calling. The only thing I see here is either IP address or something like that. I don't know who is calling. And then when you write message, it will come, but I don't know who is writing message. So I can see your message, but I don't know who is writing. So how can I begin to select people that I don't know? You see, sometimes, you know, people will just sit, you know, you know, people will just sit. And they will be making some kind of a terrible conclusion. You're welcome to the program. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening from here. My Honorable Pierre. You're welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you. I was just listening to uh, what you were saying about uh, Soludo try, uh, threatening to cut salaries of uh, an umbrellian because of uh, sit at home. In fact, they should all be ashamed of themselves. Was he not the one who was saying during campaign that uh, they should release Mass in Namdikanu to him? So he was only paying lip service to what he was saying. He didn't mean it. Mm. Is it not governors like him that is releasing uh, Boko Haram, uh, Boko Haram mm. putting them in army, bringing them, them down to the east? You I know, love there was a time I was reading something in uh, YouTube, and they said that one man was caught, you know, then... Uh, ESN or maybe whichever group went there to rescue the man. And this uh, um, terrorist started calling Soludo's line. Yes, yes. And Soludo sent military people. Can you imagine that? Exactly. People that are terrorists, a whole professor like Soludo, you... But your own brother who is being incarcerated illegally and for doing nothing, they are showing uh, civil disobedience only one day in a week, and you want to cut their salaries. Mm. These southern uh, uh, governors, they, they, they are something else, you know. I like the way you, 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 you give them direct threat. Thank you so much, and in fact, I don't know what else to call God to do for you, because you are everything for us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Uh, the line is still on. And we'll continue. Also, the sit at home uh, from the 8th to 11th of May is very, very important. We're calling on all the media, all our media personnel, to make sure that they begin preparation to make flyers available to all markets in their front land and make sure that uh, make sure that uh, our our uh, way of communicating to the people back home is activated immediately immediately from the 8th to 11th of may is complete lockdown in their front land you're welcome to the program Good evening from here. Go ahead with your question or comment. Hello? Alright, we lost him. You're welcome to the program. Yes, can you go go straight with your question? Hello. 
Oh my goodness. I'm hearing you go straight to your question, please. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we continue. I know a lot of people are calling. Please continue to call. And, uh, you know, if you are lucky, your number will go to. We are still on. Welcome to the program. Yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening from here. Yeah, this is, this is my first time of calling. Wow, you're welcome. Was it difficult? For, yeah, thank was, you. was it difficult to call? Yeah, no, 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 sir. No, it's not difficult. It's not difficult, sir. You're I welcome. have been following you for years now, yeah. Wow. I've been following you, yeah. So I just want to really thank you for your good work. Yeah. Thank I just you. want to really thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So I just want to really encourage you on the on the thing. Thank you very much. So, do you have any? Do you, do you have any? Do you have any question? Bless you too. So, do you have any question? Do you have any question? Yeah. Okay. Bye. Okay. I think you're doing him. All right. Thank you very much. The line is still open. Line is still open. All right, we are going to stay for the next uh, next uh, ten minutes or okay, five minutes, and then we we'll call it a day. You're welcome to the program. Okay, hello. 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 All right. Um. Uh, I can't go. Right. We are going to stay for the next. Uh, go ahead. Listen to the phone, please. Next. Uh, five minutes. And then we'll call it. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to the program. Yes. I say I thank God for your life and all okay. that. Hello. Uh, can you reduce? Can you reduce where you are watching me from? Raising the volume of the, of the device, please. Can you reduce the volume of the device where you are watching me from? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can't go for a All right. We're going to take like a two more colors or three colors and then we are uh, at least uh, one hour, 15 minutes into the program. And those of you that uh, have not, uh, you know, watched yesterday's program, it is going to be uploaded in, in, immediately after this program. It will be uploaded also. This particular, this one will be uploaded as well to the website. So don't miss it. You're welcome to the program. Hello. 
Can you hear me? I can hear you live and direct. You're welcome to the program. Uh, good evening, my dear. Good evening uh, from here. Yeah. <clears throat> I just want to make some few comments uh, concerning the uh, Southern governors. Uh, <clears throat> Why? There, there's one thing this Southern governors don't understand that uh, in politics, uh, you have to have the backing of your people to really succeed in politics. And uh, I don't know why sometimes they don't sit down to study the way I mean, study their own politics. Because if you want the whole of certain uh, politicians, once they move from, uh, the only good is state level politics. When it comes to the governorship or House of Assembly politics, mm. where their political career will end. Somebody like me, Kenna, after betraying him as the governor of uh, River State now, the only thing that will make him relevant in politics when it comes to national level politics is for him to go and betray his people, selling his people to please Fulani in order to be relevant because he has to do something for Fulani for them to give him what position or make him very party the national uh, policy. Yes. Because these people, they don't understand that. Why did the British keep organizing the planet than every other tribe in Nigeria? Because when they came, <clears throat> when British saw the caliber of people that are leading those from the southern Nigeria, they saw that when they came to Azikiwe, for example, they saw that Azikiwe was very ambitious. He wants to become uh, the, the prime minister. He doesn't care about any other thing. He's so personal ambition. And uh, British saw this uh, his ambition as this his ambition will not lead to their political alignment. It, it will not, the relationship will not last that them and their generation will benefit from it. Mm. So they went to uh, the Europe and they saw Awolo. They saw that Taolo was too very ambitious too. He wants to become prime minister. And if after Taolo aspires as prime minister, for example, if they are giving him, mm. what will be the interest of the, uh, the British if the next person coming in uh, decide not to align with the British? So they looked at the Fulanese. They saw that the Fulanese, they were united in their demand. They were united in their agenda. The Fulani man was not asking for uh, to become the prime minister, but they were active for their own general interest, the yes. general interest of every Fulani person. They yes. were seeing their interest in a very long term. It mm. was not all about uh, uh, Amadou Bello, it was not about uh, Sardana of Sokoto, it was all about the Fulani and So that is what is lacking in certain politicians, and that is what we are, we are still trying to tell them today that the only savior. The only politics, the only thing they can bring to the table, because when it comes to international politics, you must bring something to the table that will stand the long term. Mm. A, a, a strong man does not last in international politics. A strong man does not last in national politics because mm. you, you, it has limitations. But when you come with the backings of your people, you become a long term project, you become a long term asset. That is why Biafra. It's a long-term project. It's a long-term answer. It's something we are bringing on the table because yes. Delta has everything that other top countries in the world have been chasing, and we have something to bring to the table. It's not. It's not that someone else is bringing itself to the table. It's not that another uh, country is bringing itself to the table. We are bringing Biafra to the table, and Biafra represents a long-term, uh, 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 a long-term interest. Yes. Because if, if, you, if I begin to ask people now, uh, uh, who is the most powerful woman in Africa? I know people will begin to say Okonji Wiala, but Okonji Wiala is as, is as, uh, is as uh, useless uh, a solution that is a professor in another practice. Because these people don't have the backing of anybody. They are just individuals who are just educated. Exactly. And they are privileged. I call them relevant slaves. But exactly. if you tell me who is the most powerful African woman in uh, in uh, Africa, I will tell you that Fulani woman in the UN. You know why? Because Fulani controls the the mineral resources. Every aspect of Nigeria, they control it, and that that uh, resources is what 
is the interest of those world powers. So that woman can actually say, this is what Fulani wants. And those people in UN will be obeying it because they have something to do. That thing that Fulani is controlling, nobody, no other nation be able to provide it for, for them. Yes. But of course, you will allow, somebody has a knowledge. There are billions of Okoji Wala that can replace at any time. But that resources that Fulani is controlling in Nigeria, no, no other country can offer it for them. So the opportunity, the interest is there. And that is the interest which the Africans are bringing to the table. And that's what we are using to say that this is our resources. This is what we have. Come, let us negotiate this. Hour. This is the long term interest. It will serve the purpose of which you want. Because Britain has been enjoying Nigeria for a very long year. Mm -hmm. They have four fathers devoted it to them. They have just great that children that we are That is why you will not see people like uh, somebody like Africa ready to have because this is a long term thing. It is not to the hearing to their forefathers. You will not accept them to just give up like that. So I want to use this opportunity to thank you very much for the exposition you are doing. I just wish that our people will wake up and see that there is no other thing they can achieve in this life. The, the thing they have come to do in this life as, as a Biafra is Biafra. There is no other thing. It is in Biafra that your child will be saved. It is Biafra that your children will be saved. It is Biafra that your businesses will be saved. Everything about us is in Biafra. If we lost Biafra, we are all gone. Exactly. Thank you very much. I thank you for your good work and I want to salute you. God bless you. God bless thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bless you too. I think uh, we are going to bring this particular broadcast to an end today. We we'll continue tomorrow again uh, after this long uh, holiday. So... May God bless you. May God bless. And after this broadcast, we normally have a replay. So if you want to, you know, hang around to watch the replay, the replay will start immediately. The broadcast stop to start the next one minute. The next minute it will start, and the replay will, the replay will run all all uh, uh, all the night. So uh, for those who may have not watched the broadcast and they want to watch it, each time you come to this particular link. This broadcast will run overnight, overnight, you know, for those in Australia, for those in the United States. And then by tomorrow morning, and uh, yes, too much talking, they, they are not as, uh, by tomorrow, the, uh, the video will be uploaded permanently to the, to the, uh, to the site and uh, it can be there for work. But this, if, this night, the video will run just overnight uh, by replay. Thank you very much. May God bless Mazin and become. May God bless the Internet Security Network. May God bless the Biafra Liberation Army. May God bless uh, Umar and their husband. May God bless our uh, uh, warriors, media warriors, media uh, team. May God bless uh, the government in exile, the adversary committee, all of them, the mandate and all the groups that we have. May God bless all of you. May God bless the cabinet. And from here, from me, is good evening. You must go and listen to Simon Eba. He is doing a very fantastic job. Very great job that Simon Eba is doing. Very, very, absolutely fantastic job that he's doing. You must listen to him and share his videos accordingly. Very, very important. He is bringing a new dimension to this very awareness that we are making. And you must listen to him. Very, very important. Yes, thank you, my people. <clears throat> Battle cry. Yes, my brother. Thank you, thank you for everything. Uh, two four seven. What be this? Okay. Thank you. Um, you cannot see that uh, the seat at home we are talking about is real. That yeah. it was uh, 8 to 11. Mm -hmm. So in rounding up, uh, what do you have to say or uh, a, a battle cry? You know, the Prime Minister has uh, affirmed mm -hmm. the seat at home 11, I mean 8 to 11. 
of this yes. month. So, um, yes, thank you again. What I want to say is that uh, that uh, sit at home must be effective. The only challenge we are having is this ERAS, the career agitators who will come up tomorrow now, who so, uh, Soludo admitted that he's working with them, will come up tomorrow and say there will be no sit at home. There will be no this, there will be no that. But you see, uh, it's left for them whether they are going to obey or they are not going to obey. Because what we are fighting is for the interest of everybody, not for interest of a, a particular people or a particular um, uh, section, but is the tax that everybody must carry and do. Whether Soludo is issuing penalty to any uh, Anambra worker or not, that is entirely up to the people who are listening to him. Um, we will not uh, hesitate to implement this seat at home unless only Dumasan and Kalo is released unconditionally. That is the only thing that we avert the seat at home. But as far as it has come from the mouth of our Prime Minister, so shall it be. We are not relenting at all. Seat at home must remain and they must be effected. Thank you very much. Ugo, over to you. Yeah, you can turn this. That's just that's just five minutes of your time. Five minutes is too much because me are tired. <laughs> I won't go eat. Well, my people, we've had it all. The seat at home is real, no be joke. We must do everything for Mazen and the Kalu to be free. And then when you hear everything is everything, you see now. We are no longer interested in what this um, man must to work agitators are doing or what they will do. We are telling you now, prior to their um, uh, misinformation, tell your people that there will be some fools, some nicompos that will come back to tell them that this seat at home has been cancelled, that those people are criminals that have been expelled, that those people are not thinking well, that those people are no longer fighting for Biafra restoration, that those people are the ones that sold Mazen Nandekalo, and they are doing everything to make sure that Mazen Nandekalo will never be freed. So tell anybody you know in Biafra land, if you are in Biafra land, you are listening to what we are saying, Cut the part, our Prime Minister Mazi Simon Ekba said it clearly that sit at home is between 8th and 11th of this month we are in now, this May, so that nobody could give you any counter or misinformation. It is not, there is no cancelling, no cancellation, nothing is going to cancel it, nothing is about to hinder it. We are standing on these three days, sit at home. And I want us to know that this sit at home is surreal. Whether the dog, um, uh, my dog in Kuwait is barking, whether those chihuahuas in um, Radio Biafra from Radio Biafra will be barking, we are not listening to them. Tell everybody you know, we must not listen to these people. All we are focusing on now in this sit at home, the aim is to free Maze Nand Gano. Make it is very clear, it is very certain. The point here is that Mazen Nandekalo must be freed, and anybody that is against this sit at home is against the freedom of Mazen Nandekalo. Let it be clean and clear now. Anybody, anybody that speaks, that thinks <laughs> against this sit at home is against the freedom of Mazen Nandekalo. This time we are not even talking about the restoration of Biafra. We are just telling you about Mazen Nandekalo. Those that have told you they love him, they so much cherish him, they want him out today. We are not begging you to join us to preach for his freedom. Keep your mouth shut. That one that do head like this with your girlfriend, keep your mouth shut. Although your mouth, no, if it, we are just telling you Biafras. Whether 1,000 teeth, I don't even see them again online. Whether they do their life again, I'm not interested. But what we want you, Biafrans, to know is that these people 
are coming to tell you anything negative about this at home make we know ahead of time that they are no longer representing Biafra and this sit at home is just prior to freedom to Mazen and the Kano. So nobody should counter it, nobody should give you any other negative news unless the Prime Minister Simon Eba himself came back, come back to tell you that the sit at home has been lifted, has been cancelled. If not, the sit at home remains. From here, I will say good night to you all. There is one field marshal, a grand commander, a general in the industry. The one they couldn't arrest, the real man. He is right here in the studio. Please, brother, my mouth cannot describe who you are. Please kindly thunder as the way you used to thunder to uh, extend your greetings to Biafra people and uh, affirm this uh, uh, 8 to 11 to sit at home of this month. For the release of Mazin and the Kano. Thank you. You have the mic, sir. Brother, you have the mic. I see your network is okay. Your voice, your, please fire on. We have uh, Biafra Unite in the building. Wow. Biafra Unite. Please Biafra fire on. <laughs> so, let me be the first time I will hear your voice. <laughs> I do better for you, Biafra Unite. No matter who comes out of the country, you can't say. Biafra Unite, fire on. The, the mic will. is here. I will go on for. <laughs> no, look who mother they can look out of it. Biafra Unite, if you can hear me, please fire on. The mic is yours. I just want when it works, they give, they give a problem. Not from, not from Zui there. You know the Zoom, as it? Don't worry. Uh, network, even here, uh, where I am, network is also the stops. So, he is uh, um, the big masquerade in the building. Please, uh, if you can hear us, uh, Biafran Unite, please uh, fire on. We are closing. Say hello to Biafran people while you round up the curtain. Wow, 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 well, 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 it is network, and um, 247, you did not pay your 247 channel, did you forget? You know, I paid it le uh, now, I f not that mm -hmm. I forget, I don't want to be streaming uh, Simon on it for now, because after streaming okay. Simon, they either delete it or they give me more sanctions. <laughs> so oh, I am being careful because the, that channel now he deal with one leg, one leg, one leg. <laughs> they won't bring that down. So I they try, I they try make the strike finish so that I go do what I want to do with them. Okay, I understand you. Biafra Unite, are you okay now? You can fire on, please. Um, bro, have you started uh, thinking you are your channel to the rumble? My brother, no, I know you even go there yet. I never go that rumble yet. Okay, my call is nearly finished, sir. Maria. Maria. Yeah, please, be friend, you like, um, maybe you have a network difficulties or whatever. And we are almost rounding up. I wanted to, to say hello to Biafran people as you unite, to unite us to sit at home. Two four seven is well. Um, thank you, Biafran people. You've been wonderful. You know, you've been with us for all this while. 
Uh, we want to say thank you. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Biafra Unite, you can fire on. Uh, you can fire on the mic is yours. So say hello to Biafra people. Wow, it's well, it's well, it's well. So, um, we want to thank every Biafran that have been with us. Remember, uh, this is uh, Gaddafi of Biafra TV. Please, the most important, you can see what uh, 247 is just explaining now, that they want to bring his station down. I want you to subscribe Gaddafi of Biafra TV so that any day that I will no longer come, any day anything happen to any of us, they can still come to this station and let you know. And any of his new backup, like uh, Just Re. Just Re is a, a channel owned by the same 247 as a backup. And please, I want like you to go there and subscribe. Subscribe and activate the bell icon so that whenever we come, you'll be the first to know. That is why we want you to subscribe to these channels. And right here with me in the studio, we also have uh, Biafra Battle Cry, Biafra Battle Cry TV. It's also part of us, you can see. And I would like you to go to his channel as well and subscribe so that <clears throat> if any of us go down, we will come down to there to announce to you. It's not, you are not going to pay. It is free. So it is good for you to subscribe all these channels so that if any of us go down, we we'll always come to the one that are still standing to tell you that uh, we have gone down and there is another new name so that you keep on following us. Above all, this gospel must be preached. And above all, this is uh, Gaddafi of Biafra TV. Subscribe, uh, activate the bell icon, I like what is going on today and uh, you always keep on sharing our program. Next time I promise you it's not going to be long like this again. But if be it as may, we thank you for coming. God bless you. So 247, your closing remark and the uh, Biafra uh, battle cry. Please <clears throat> finish and uh, you shut down. Thank you. Okay. No, now you go close them there. Now you go close <laughs> Can you go close and just end the stream? Please remind them uh, your channel. When you're closing your remark, remind them your channel is encouraging that they should go there well, somewhere in case. I don't tell them my channel. I don't tire. Not they tell again. <laughs> Who won't follow? You follow. You see, now there are new. I think that tomorrow I go read that uh, YouTube now. YouTube is now showing a new, they brought out a new, uh, uh, what do you call it, update, guideline, instructions. I just, I was reading it as uh, Mazze Simon was online. He's saying that you shall not tell people or refer people to another website. You shall not share a website. That is a Simon today, you know, go tell people, go to so, 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 please, or go to, um, uh, IPOB dot this one dot this one. You will know if you do it, you are in the Wahala. This I don't finish reading. I never finish reading it, but maybe tomorrow I go get there and go there, go read them well. Uh, they just sent me this one new guideline <laughs> for April. So they are really trying to do anything, and they are saying that if they have taken down your channel, if you open another one, they go still take and down. <laughs> So they are targeting us from all corner. Well, so that what they said. The sit at home you heard of is real. We are going to sit at home. Tell everybody from me to you is good night. Thank you. Yes, uh, this, this is Fire. Jaffa Battle Cry. Um, as you can see, we are all giving uh, notice about the threat of uh, uh, YouTube. How they are being. Uh, so close to what we are doing, all the activities we are doing concerning the Biafra Gospel. 
I actually, I have a backup as well, but not on YouTube. I'm now moving to Rumble. So very soon, when my um, YouTube sync everything from the, I mean, um, Rumble sync everything to the Rumble, I will make it known. But for now, it's just depending. Maybe within a couple of days, now everything will transfer to my Rumble. Then to be clear, what I have in the YouTube will not be in the Rumble. So um, I thank you. As for the sit at home, whatever you hear from uh, Nikon Pools, the career agitators, ignore it. Remember anything our Prime Minister, Mas Simon Oliver said, is from the heart of our leader, Onyendo Mazen Nandekano. Okay? So don't forget what he said, that you should go and follow Simon Oliver, that he's bringing a new dimension to this awareness that we are making. And if you read the article of... Uh, uh, memo that he, he wrote December 15th, 2022. The first article there is someone, uh, so it is no go area. Whatever he says, stands. If you say sit at home, sit at home. May God bless you, bless all the uh, followers, those supporters, and those uh, commenters. May God bless everybody. They will. Thank you. We are shutting down now. Um, I salute each and every one of you that we that come, both the one that were attacking us and uh, the one that are praising us. <laughs> I greet each and every one of you as uh, enter Biafra. See, enter Biafra with my number. Um, the one that was uh, insulting us and the one that were praising us. I salute you all. You are doing your job. You know, good and evil work together for good. So everything work together for our good. So thank you. All we promise you is Biafra. You sleep in Nigeria and wake up in Biafra. From me, okay. from me to you, to all the Biafran people, we salute Biafran government in exile. We also salute the adversary committee. We salute Omada. We salute media team. We salute every everybody that wants Twitter. We also recognize the uh, Biafra writers of conscience for their great job they are doing. We recognize each and every one of you. Above all, most especially those that started with us from the beginning to today. I salute you all. I said from my own time here is good morning. Thank you. <laughs>